Welcome to GrowthToFreedom.com, the show that brings you inspiration, transformation, and leadership. We're helping you connect the dots, see the blind spots, and get unstuck so you can go out and generate more leads, more sales, more profits. More importantly, so you can go out and have a bigger reach, a bigger impact, and make a bigger contribution. Have you noticed that there are some pretty significant changes in the world as it relates to selling, right? In fact, when you think of selling, what comes to mind for you? And today we're going to spend some time talking about some of the shifts you need to make to be able to more effectively influence, sell, persuade, so you can get more new clients effortlessly and easily. And these strategies work. Why? Because again, there's been a lot of change. This comes out of a couple of conversations in the last week with some of our clients. And when we were surveying some of our clients, you know, they had told us, you know, when we said, hey, what are a couple of the best things that you feel you've gotten from what we do for you? And they were like, oh my gosh, the, the, the framework around this new model of selling, this new method of selling has transformed our business. And it's a method that we've been using for a long while. In fact, we were able to take customer service people. See, imagine that. Imagine taking someone who's an introvert or not really considering themselves that great at sales and giving them some tools and them becoming high performers. So imagine customer service people being able to become your high performers in your business, right? On the other hand, we have also given this to high performers already, and it's like putting gasoline on a fire in a good way, where they were able to go out and double and triple sales. And also, let's face it, what else is important? Retention, right? Have you ever met those overzealous salespeople that they sell somebody into something so well or so hard or whatever you want to call it, but just as fast as they enroll, people cancel, people drop out, and a whole lot more. We want to help you avoid that. So. And in fact, we're going to talk about the end of traditional sales and what you need to do instead so you can get clients daily. Or if you want to turn a customer service type person into a high performer, or maybe you are already very good at selling, you want to take your, your game up a couple notches and decrease cancels and, re, and increase retention, right? And a whole lot more. So here is the big problem, right? Traditional sales is dead as we know it. And why is this important to you right now? Uh, first of all, if you don't make the shifts, right, with what we're going to talk about today, what will it cost you? It's going to cost you business. It's going to cost you reputation. It's going to cost you a lot of anxiety where maybe you're, you know, the creator of your business or the founder of your business or product or service or whatever, and you're the only one who can sell it and you can get no help. You can, you know, you're not attracting other rainmakers. I mean, I dealt with this for my first probably decade. And I've been doing this for 30 years, 30 plus years now uh, at the time of this segment. And one of my biggest frustrations was I, I had a hard time having other people who could sell effectively, at least in my mind. And it was because of these shifts that that was able to transform that at our peak, we were able to grow a business that we had over 175 employees, you know, close to 120 roughly people that were selling. Most of those people were customer service types that became high performers. I'm going to share so, some of those secrets. We want to help you avoid some of the problems. We want to help you avoid, you know, selling refunds, selling cancel, having high cancel rates, right? Or, you know, hitting lulls in sales or you being the only one responsible for your income. So let's dive into it. Here are some of the things to understand about the problem. Today, more than ever, people hate to be or have a feeling of being sold, right? By that, you know, slick, kind of salesperson or whatever you want to call it, right? At the same time, what do people really love in the process if it's done correctly? They love to buy. In fact, our methodology teaches you how to build what we refer to as a buyer's system or a buyer's culture, right? Who are a couple of the best companies in the world at this? You know, companies like Apple, right? They don't have a selling system. They have a buyer's system, a buyer's culture, don't they, right? I mean, literally think about when a new, uh, a new system is launched, like there'll be people around the building wanting to get in line to get this very high priced piece of technology compared to other companies, a buyer's culture, a buyer's system. 
Another great company that does this is Starbucks. And I'm not getting any you know, affiliate fees or whatever for, for um, you know, mentioning these companies, but Starbucks has a buyer's system, a buyer's culture instead of a, a, not a selling culture, right? So you, know, you can get into any number of Starbucks around the world and there'll be lines and lines and so on. And people are paying three, four, 10 times to get you know, a coffee or a tea or whatever that they could make at home. But because of the experience, it's a buyer's culture. We're going to show you how to build some of the elements in your business with today's session, this segment. So even worse, though, with some of the challenges, people feel selling is something you do to someone, right? When done right, it's what you do for them. Like Apple considers it a service. Starbucks considers it a service. It's not what you're doing to someone. It's what, or, or it's what you're doing for someone, right? And we'll talk more about that here and what you can do instead uh, in just a few minutes. Many times a traditional outdated selling system is awkward, isn't it? Like it's icky. Like it just, those are my fancy pants words right here. Icky. It feels awkward, right? It's uncomfortable. It feels sleazy in some ways, right? Let's help you and your company and your team and people you do business with avoid some of that. You know why? Because what they do most of the time is they push their widget, their gadget, their gadget, their glop, and they're, again, my fancy pants, fa fa fancy pants language and their agenda, instead of focusing on the thing that matters, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. So what do you do instead? What do you do instead so you can create your buyer's culture or transform customer service people into high pro or maybe the introvert that isn't your traditional sales person into a high performer? You do some of this, right? First of all, it's simple, right? You, you probably know this intuitively. First of all, be a human being, right? Just be a good human being. Focus on them, right? Focus on them. What do they want and need, right? Ask versus tell. And by the way, we've got a little sample overview of a few really critical questions that we found in all our years of doing this that really, again, now working recently with some of our uh, private clients where we said, what were some of the most, they talked about these things being super or hyper critical in the experience for them to leverage, to grow, to add other team members, to get other people selling their stuff for them in an easy, cool way, right? So ask versus tell. Oh, another one. Oh, it's so misunderstood, right? Most people don't plan to fail. They just fail to plan. So be prepared. Teach your team to be prepared. Do more research. You know, who is your client? There's so many easy tools that you can use to go, you know, not stalk your potential clients, but you can learn about your clients, their interests, their behaviors, what they like, what they don't, and a whole lot more. It's never been easier than now versus what a lot of people do. The many sales pros do this, the pro, you know what I'm talking about? Wink, wink, right? Those hard closing salespeople that very few people really like and enjoy is they are in a situation where they are winging it right? They're winging it, which is no fun at all, right? In the experience. Next, focus on what problem you solve for them, right? This is really critical. Like if there's one thing that you can do, that I can do, we can all do better in our business is really stay tuned in, connected to, you know, hey, what is the problem we solve for our potential clients? What is the problem we solve for them? And if we do, it makes this work a whole lot easier, which then leads us to the ability when we focus on the problem we solve for them, now we can communicate about it in their language, not our, our fancy pants language, but in their language, right? We want to stay away from, you know, jargon, techno babble, you know, uh, you know fancy, fancy words, if that makes sense, right? Um, next is serving your client. Serve them. Buyer's culture, right? Serve them, right? Serve your client to help them get the result help them get the outcome, right? The feeling they want from what it is you offer, right? That they can't get anywhere else. And also it's a good idea to make sure to remind your potential clients and clients that this is something that we're providing you in a unique way that you can't get anywhere else and find those elements, those layers of what it is that you deliver, this problem you solve, the way you solve it, that they can't get anywhere else. It makes all the difference uh, in the world. And then that leads to some of the casual conversations so you can create conversions. Isn't that what you want? I mean, if that's not what you want, you can shut this segment and this session off. But if you want to get into more casual conversations that lead to actual sales or conversions, 
then you're gonna love what we've put together here for you. So the first part of this process is to, you know, simply state to a potential client in a conversation, hey, we wanna help identify where you are and where you wanna go. And that information, that insight is gonna help us structure so we can work and help you <laughs> if that's what you want, right? So, you know, help identify where you are to where you wanna go. We have to have a good reference point. So now let's dive into you. Right. In every industry, every niche. I mean, we've worked with uh, companies. You know, I've been blessed doing this for 30 years that we've actually had over 200,000 clients purchase our different programs, products, services, tools. We've coached over 5,000 founders and CEOs from 180 different industries, from over 12 different countries. Right. So there's a lot of experience. So it's not a one size fits all, but some of this can be considered a one size fits all. What do I mean by that? You want to be, state very clearly hey, we want to help you identify where you are. So we can help you get where you want to go. And we have to have a good reference point of where we're starting with what it is you're looking at, your product, your service, your, your situation, right? That then leads to another great question uh, originated from you know, one of the most brilliant you know, uh, people studying the human mind, psychology to ever exist, Emerson, right? And so this is a derivative of his question. Uh, Dan Sullivan has a version of this called the R factor question right? Whoever it is that you want to give credit to, go give credit to them. But this question is so incredibly powerful. You know, what would, you know, if we were meeting one year from today, if we were meeting six months from today, a month from today of our work together, what do you feel would have to happen for you to feel happy and satisfied with your progress or happy and satisfied that you made a good decision to do X with us, right? Just think about that. So there's all kinds of layers of why that's a powerful question. It puts them in the state right? The state of actually stepping into your service, stepping into your product program or whatever you deliver. And it gives you a framework. What is on their TV screen? Now there's thousands of channels on TV, so I'm not going to be able to pick just one, but let's say you're a fan of, you know, ESPN. I don't know. Let's say it's ESPN. And so if they tell you the show, they won't love to watch on ESPN. Maybe it's like the show uh, Get Up in the morning. Well, now if you know that's what they tune into based on this question, right? I love GetUp and I love it because of this. If they tell you that about your type of product or service, doesn't that help make it easier in a casual conversation to provide the solution and lead them to a good decision, right? That's what the, this kid, and by the way, we're just, we're just scratching the surface on some of this because there are deeper elements of this. But ideally, if you take what we're sharing with, you can go use this and turn some of your, you know, service-oriented people into high performers. Maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you don't consider yourself great at selling. Well, you could take this and apply it today and start going and making more sales, right? Oh, another powerful question. In fact, I'm firmly convinced based on data, based on doing it, based on our teams doing it, if you spend your time, you and your team focused on five times a day getting into casual conversations with potential clients and just at, even ask them this question, What's the number one thing you need the most help with right now? Now, if you add the other elements we've already talked about and some others that, you know, I'll give you a snapshot of here as well. But this one question, if you just spent your time every day, five times a day, asking people, what's the number one thing you need the most help with right now? It would transform your business. Because two things would happen. Number one, 80% of the people you ask that question to are not a fit for your product service, uh, your, your glop, call it. we'll call it your product or service. But then if you become a valuable resource or invaluable because so few people are willing to do it, do what others won't do so you can get what others won't get. You become an invaluable resource and connect them to solve that problem for the thing they need the most. Those people will become referral partners for you easily and almost effortlessly if you come from this place. But then there'll be a 20% of the people where now they are a candidate for what you do. And because you've provided an experience, they can't get anywhere else. In other words, this buyer's culture They'll feel it and it increases the chances of your sales success and your team sales success. It's really pretty simple when we break this down. I hope you're starting to see the light of what could happen for you by putting something like this in place for you. And then another great question to ask once you get gather those first three is, hey, I'm curious, you know, you've been at this a while, you're pretty savvy. Most cons consumers are today, aren't they? Like today's customers are more educated than ever before. They've usually done research ahead of time on your type of service or your types of products, haven't they? 
So if you ask them, well, hey, I'm curious, what's gotten in the way of you moving forward with this and up till now? They'll tell you some of the objections right then and there so that you can kind of guide them through your process. And ideally, you know, if you've got a right fit, they're a good candidate and the right fit candidate. Now, all you have to do is make the presentation in customs. And that's what happened when you use some of these tools, use some of these key questions. Now it gives you the ability to customize the experience within your framework, which is why it works, which is why it works. I hope that you can start to see how exciting this can be, right? People ask me, well, Dan, like, how were you able to build like this big company that did millions and millions a month? Part of it was whether by accident, no, admittedly today, I'll admit uh, it was by accident to some degree, and now carrying this forward at a much deeper level and really understanding the psychology, it's so powerful what can happen when you really can customize the suit, so to speak, for your potential clients once you understand them. I think Dan Sullivan says, people buy from us, not because they understand us, meaning us as a salesperson, us as a team, us as a company, but they feel understood. And these kind of questions give you the leverage to be able to do that. And so we have created a full blueprint. So this is just a snapshot to give you the tools right now to use. And I just want to show you one of the tools we work with with our clients, and it's an entire 12-step checklist. It's not a script per se, but it's a 12-step outline that like this, this is the script and the outline that we used with our teams that helped us grow to millions a month and had such a big impact in turning customer service type people into high performers. You know, one of our clients recently, Stephanie, is like, you know, I was a therapist. Like, you know, when you think of a therapist, I don't know what you think of it as far as their, you know, salesmanship. Right. But she goes, you know, I've been able to more than triple my income. And this one tool has probably been the, one of a handful of, of the most valuable tools in my toolbox to be able to use. I hope it can become a valuable tool for you, too. Now, with that in mind, let me go ahead and show you the blueprint here for a second. All right. So let's walk through this uh, simple blueprint. You'll notice the title, How to Sell More by Selling Less. Right. And if you take everything that we've shared with you, it really comes down to that. And it's the guide to enrollment mastery. In other words, get more new clients using an interview interview method, right? An interview method. Now we're not going to break all this down for sake of time, right? But if you want to go deeper with some of this, I encourage you to reach out to us because if we work together, this would be a tool that we could help help customize for you. We've had clients who engaged us to actually build their custom sales blueprint and sales playbook for them and their company right? Including things like this in a more expanded way, objections, presentation, and a whole lot more. Uh, so that might be something that interests you, right? But here are the 12 steps. Set the framework, identify something fascinating. Why are you interested? Why now? The R-factor question, which we covered already, right? Narrow the focus. What's the number one thing you need the most help with? Deepen your understanding. What's been getting in the way? What do you feel you need to have success? Customize the offer now. So you customize the, the process, you get agreement and then move forward in the sale. And then what happens when you get objections? Anyway, all of that is available to you in this simple blueprint. So you might be saying to yourself, Dan, this is amazing, right? And we like to think it's amazing. Uh, at the same time, right? It's not a fit for everybody, right? So let's summarize what we've covered up to this point. You know, essentially, you know, we've covered in the last segment, casual conversations to help you get more new clients and or train your team on how to be able to get more new clients. Why? So we can get you out of the day-to-day -day or get you out of a place where you're the only one responsible for your income or get a team of people that could help you, right? Or turn some of your other staff that you might have that might be assistants or customer service, et cetera, to have the power to also help you generate business. We also talked about how traditional sales today is, is dead, <laughs> right? And if you take this casually, by the way, you'll become a casualty right, of the shifts in business today. And it's going to continue to shift. Those companies that continue to operate in a selling environment or have a seller's culture are going to die. All the new success is going to be built around this new model, which is about building a buyer system or a buyer's culture. And this gives you the tools to do it. And so we talked about what you can do today instead of working with an outdated system. We talked about why this is important right now and a whole lot more, right? So again, if you want some help, right? If you could see the value of having help with this, right? We have a lot of different ways that we can help you. 
essentially we're like a co-pilot to help you get a system in place so you can get clients daily and get you free from the day to day, right? I mean, what would it be like if you could, you know, be in a place where you could spend more time with your kids or be more present with your spouse or partner or have the ability to work more on your business instead of stuck in it, right? And stuck in the grind of it. Like, would it be worth to have, again, a team of others that had the ability to persuade, to influence, and a whole lot more, right? So if you want to go deeper to learn more about how we can help you put systems like this is one of like 30 or 40 different systems that we work with our clients to get installed to help them grow their business with less stress. If you'd like to learn more about how we can help you, then go to BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. That's BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. You can schedule a time for us to talk. We'll review your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not, where you want to go. You know, we'll talk about some options to help you get there. And if we can help you, we'll talk about customizing the options to fit your size of your business, your situation, and a whole lot more. It's low key. It's pretty easy. If you'd like to take advantage of that, just go to BreakthroughStrategyCall.com, schedule a time, and uh, we look forward to working with you. And either way, here's my hope for you. I hope that you take the time to put what we've shared with you today in place for you, right? That you will apply the concept of building your own buyer's culture, your own buyer's system in place, that you'll move away from a traditional selling system that is dead and will become more deadly over time, not only for you, but your clients and reputation, right? We want to help you avoid some of those costly mistakes. And you can do that like when is now the best time it's a question i ask my kids when is now the best time right we've given you a blueprint for casual conversations to create more conversions i hope you put it in place test it worst case test it don't believe anything i share with you test it for yourself see how it works and by the way if you have questions reach out to us another option go to breakthroughstrategycall.com anyway seize the day make it a great a great day make it a great week make it a great quarter make it a great year I look forward to meeting you at some point down the road and uh, go from there. We'll see you in another segment coming up. Bye for now.